Hey, church family. I know you know this, but we have a vision at our church. That vision is to glorify God together through life. Now, while this should be the ambition of every Christian, we hold this to be our desire to offer our lives as a living sacrifice in order to please God. However, glorifying God together through life is not just a statement, it's a lifestyle. Life, it represents how we're doing community. You see the letter L? Learning the Word. We believe in teaching the Word verse by verse and chapter by chapter because Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, His Word, that in me you may have peace. The letter I? Investing into relationships. God made it very clear it's not good for a man to be alone. Therefore, we believe that true fellowship is an act of worship. Hanging out actually glorifies God. The letter F, following the way of Christ. Jesus made it clear again that He is the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, applying what He said to our lives, it's got to be our priority. And the letter E, engaging our world. We've been given the task to tell others there's hope for eternal life in the wonder of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Life is not just a statement, it's not just a term, it's our DNA. And over the last year, we've already been doing it. We have women's life, men's life, kid life, student life, young adult life, married life. We've incorporated this into every bit of who we are. You see, our desire is to weave our DNA into every aspect, into everything we do. Some say that it's just semantics. Not me. I say there's power in a name. A name defines you. It identifies you. It clarifies who you are, and it clarifies what you represent. My dad, he used to tell me every time I was walking out the door, he used to say to me, hey, I want you to know the, the name Lo, the last name Lo, it means something. He told me that it meant something to him and that it meant something to his father. And me as a dad, every time my kids would walk out the door, I would look at them and say the same thing. Just remember, your last name is Lo. And that name means something. It means something to me, and it meant something to your grandfather. It meant something to your great-grandfather, and it better mean something to you. So represent your name well. Because names have meaning. We don't have many Delilahs or Judases in our nursery. I don't know if you've noticed that. Because name means something. In fact, names mean and meant something to Jesus. The other day as I was reading John chapter 1, the Bible says that Jesus looked at Simon and he said, you are Simon. That was his name. But he said then, you shall be called Cephas. He changed Simon's name to represent what he was making him to be. Levi was changed to Matthew, Joseph to Barnabas, and Saul to Paul. You see, in John chapter one, the Lord began to impress on my heart that he was doing something new at Calvary Chapel South Bay and that he wanted to change our name. His desire, I believe, was 1 Corinthians chapter two, verse two, for I have determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I wrestled with the Lord, let me be honest with you, because I was concerned with what people may think. Maybe people would misunderstand. Maybe people would even leave the church. He reminded me very strongly that he was the leader of this church, not me and not the people. I'll never forget sitting at a pastor's conference many years ago when Pastor Chuck, he was the founder of Calvary Chapel, was speaking. He actually said his greatest concern at that pastor's conference was that people would make a monument out of the movement of the Spirit. And he challenged all the pastors there that day to remember the verse in Zechariah, not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. That's what Zechariah told the nation of Israel. And that truth that was true so many hundreds of years ago that was true in the 1960s, that's the foundation of the Calvary movement. It's still our foundation today by His Spirit. Thus, we're changing our name. We're holding on to our history as Calvary. 
because we will always simply teach the word simply, just as Pastor Chuck said. But this word goes further back than Pastor Chuck and the Jesus movement of the 1960s. It goes all the way back to a hill, a hill upon which Jesus died, that Calvary hill. This same Jesus said that if you want to gain your life, you must lose it. That's what Calvary represents. So Calvary represents more than just the name of the church. It reveals where true life is actually found. With this, our new name is Calvary Life. Calvary is the foundation, and life, it expresses what the Spirit is now doing in our church. He's breathing life into His people, for the people of the church, not this building. He's beckoning us to prepare for His coming. He's pouring out His Spirit in these last days to offer salvation and discipleship for all those that would come, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, until the whole world hears, especially our own county, LA. This name change, it actually charges us to learn the Word, to invest into relationships, to follow the way of Christ and engage our world with the power of the gospel. Paul said it best, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. You see, we're not a social club, we're the church. We are express the hope of the gospel to the world. We're to preach the pillar and the foundation of truth found in the Bible unashamedly. We are his bride. We're to die to ourselves and allow his life to flow through us to seek and to save the lost. Calvary, it reminds us of his living sacrifice. He's not a dead monument made by the hands of men. He's a living being flowing through each one of us that have accepted Him as our Savior and Lord. To God be the glory for what He's done in my life and what He's doing and what He's done in your life. Now, we have the challenge from Him to aspire to the name that He's given us. This Calvary life, it represents a life that is surrendered to His will, not our own. Only a few remember the name Simon, but everyone who calls themselves a Christian knows the name Peter because Peter, he became the name that Jesus called him. And we're to do the same. So let this name, let it be like a, a new engagement ring on your finger because we're the bride of Christ. At first, well at first you put that ring on and it feels strange because you've never belonged to someone like this before. You stare at it, you even twirl it, you're even astonished at the price that someone paid for you to wear it on your finger so freely. However, it doesn't stop you from showing it off to everyone around you to reveal the new thing that's happened in your life. Therefore, let's do the same. Paul said it best, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. And as the bride, Paul had no problem revealing the life of Christ in him. And it's time to continue and for us to do the same. With this, let us glorify God together through life. Thank you, Jesus. You make all things new.